our next speaker, um, we've had a few talks recently around disclosing vulnerabilities more from the researcher side. So our next speaker is going to be sharing um, points of view from the person who actually looks after and manages an open source project. So introducing our next speaker, Christina. Tena koto, kotene takumihi ki na tangata fenoa o tiroha nei. E mahi ana o i te hapori mahara mo te kau ma toru to. Ko au te kaiho tu kopapa mo mahara te punaha kopaki pumana vai he rekore. E mahi ana o i Catalyst IT ko Christina Hopna aho. Nō reira, tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. Over the years of KiwiCon and KawaiiCon, we've heard lots of stories where organizations did not respect independent security researchers who privately disclose vulnerabilities. That often meant organizations didn't respond, were dismissive when they did reply, or didn't fix serious issues, which then resulted in the dreaded zero day, of which one almost was dropped yesterday by my colleague Andrew. On the flip side, there are many organizations that are grateful to information security researchers like you um, who share their findings and contribute to a more secure experience using software applications. These organizations often follow good practice. For example, they engage with the researchers, give them public credit, create CBE numbers, and also communicate about resolution timeframes. Sometimes, Rookie mistakes are made, though, that can lead to frustrations on both sides when expectations aren't met. The scenarios that you will see here today are all that I've experienced over the last 12 years. To preserve anonymity, all identifiable personal and also organizational information has been removed. And they may also have been shortened slightly for brevity. So I've recruited a good friend of all of us here to help me out today. Hey, Feli Monster, where are you? Do I hear my name? Hello. Hi, Feli. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Hello, hackers. It's so good to see you again. It's great to be here. OK, shall we get started? Let's do it. Okay, let's look at scenario number one. Dearfaley.monster.net. I found a vulnerability at www.company.biz. Here are the steps to reproduce the problem, the references, and mitigations. So, what's really good is there's a clear description of the issue, details to replicate, replicate it, and proposed mitigations. What's not so good, it's a mass scan of websites sent with a mail merge, and it discloses to the wrong team. So our tip really is, please do not disclose other people's vulnerabilities. Number two. Dear Fairly Monster, all your open source community town hall meeting minutes are publicly visible. These may contain sensitive information. So in general, of course, that is really pretty good advice because we do want to keep information private. However, unfortunately, in this case, the researcher failed to see that these were public meetings and therefore minutes are publicly available because that's part of the community service. So our tip, don't just rely on automated tools to find stuff, but kind of check the context there may be a very good explanation why an organization makes certain information public that is otherwise privileged. Dear Feli Monster, 2.30 a.m. Hello, I found a vulnerability. 3.56 a.m. Hi, can I please get a response? 6.19 a.m. Hi, I haven't heard from you. 8.27 a.m. Can I please have a reply? So in this case, the researcher really did find a vulnerability, which was good, and they did disclose it privately. But they were a bit too impatient, and sending numerous emails within a short period of time 
on the same day. So our tip here, give the team some time to respond because they might actually be asleep while you're working. And they might also have some response timeframes published. They might also be at a hacker conference. Oh, really? Yeah. Or a hacker conference. All right. Dear Feli Monster, I ran an automated penetration test suite on demo.feli.monster and found number one, two, three, all the way down to 20. Please fix and design CVEs. So the good bit about this is they reported the problems privately. The not so good is they used infrastructure they weren't supposed to test on and no proof of concept, 95% of the results are false positives. So kind of probably pretty obvious, our tip here, review the security and responsible disclosure policy and any associated information. You might also find a list of certain previously reported issues that aren't actually problems, and therefore you can kind of cut down on those false positives. Dear Feli Monster, this is an email not sent by the security researcher. I stumbled upon repository.git and was wondering if you knew about the issue. It has a CVE number assigned. So again, in this case, the researcher did find a legitimate issue, and again, they reported it privately. Oh, sorry, the, the researcher found the legitimate issue, but it was not disclosed by them. So they did not communicate with the team and therefore didn't do a responsible disclosure. Instead, they immediately published the problem, therefore putting a lot of organizations around the world at risk. So our tip? Get in touch with the team privately to do a responsible disclosure. And also the issue that you may have seen might actually have wider implication than you can see at first. Therefore, kind of giving the team a little bit of time to figure out what is actually going on. So to summarize, we'd like to offer those five tips for you as Faley's tips for security researchers. Number one, don't rely solely on automated tools. Check the context. Number two, don't disclose others' vulnerabilities. Number three, read published security information. Number four, get in touch privately. I'm out of fingers. Number five, give the team time to respond. But of course, since information security researchers are not the only party in a vulnerability disclosure conversation, we'd also like to offer some advice to organizations. Here are Feli's tips. Number one, don't panic when you are contacted. Number two, read resources and guidelines. Yeah, so here in our Aotearoa, for example, you can find information about responsible disclosures and much more on the websites from Cert Inset and the Privacy Commission. Number three, have a responsible disclosure policy and a contact. Number four, consider outsourcing the handling of disclosures. And so for example, you can use services such as Backcrowd and HackerOne. Number five, re respond in a timely fashion and engage with the researcher. So these are our five tips for information security researchers and organizations alike when communicating about security vulnerabilities and how to work together to fix them. We'd like to invite all of you now to check your workflows and also policies to help you being taken more seriously by the other party. Kia ora.